Hi there everyone, welcome to today's Costex Coffee Break webinar. Today we'll be covering part three of the five part series on subcontractor comparison. My name is Jonathan Mudrick and I'm a product specialist with Exactil. Costex the product, um, if you're new to Costex, basically the product is a digital estimating software with universal application ranging from hand-drawn sketches, PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD files and BIM models which all incorporate on-screen measurement, live-linked workbooks, revisioning capability, and BIM data extraction. Last month's webinar, the part two of the five-part series on subcontract comparison, we went ahead and showed you how we could export a tender out for our subcontractors to price. There are two different methods for that, either export tender via an EXF file, um, where the subcontractor can go ahead and price um, the tender within Costex Viewer and then send it back to you as an, as an EXQ file. And then um, the second option was the more traditional method where you can export out to Excel and the subcontractor can go ahead and price um, the tender within Excel and then send the file back to you. Once you've received the files, uh, we again have two different methods on how to import um, those rates. We've got an import quote button which will import the EXQ file if the subcontractor has used Costex Viewer. Um, or the second option is to manually um, enter in the subcontractor's quote um, using the Excel file. If you'd like to go ahead and view this webinar, please feel free to visit our website at www.exactal.com forward slash webinars. Today's webinar, part three of the five-part series, um, we're going to go ahead and cover the following topics. The first one will be fill from SMIT um, or from another subcontractor. We'll also speak about the status of rates um, by using different colors. Um, we'll also show you how we can select a subcontractor as our preferred subcontractor for that trade. And then lastly, we'll touch on how to fill to lump sum. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump straight into my Costex. Just to pick up from where we left off the last um, webinar, last month's webinar, uh, we went ahead and added all the subcontractors in for their specific trades, and you'll notice that for A1 concrete and C4 concrete, we had entered in some rates by using the import quote methods at the top over here. Once a price has been entered, you can select the subcontractor for that item as preferred, regardless of whether the price is the lowest, in order to arrive at a tender price. However, before selecting a preferred subcontractor, um, adjustments may need, need to be made to ensure that the comparison is on a like-for-like -like basis. In this case, when we drill down to level two of the workbook, um, you'll notice that both our concrete subcontractors have items that have been excluded um, from their tender. See there for A1 concrete, those items have been excluded, and for C4 concrete, um, the saw joint items have been excluded. We'll deal with A1 concrete first, so I'm going to go ahead and select the following cells and um, delete them from the workbook. As we have no comparable pricing from the competing subcontractor, um, you can see the competing subcontractor has just included items, so there's no rates. Um, we shall price these items based on our initial estimate rates, which are these rates over here. To do that, we just need to highlight these cells, go ahead and click on the Fill button, and you'll see that we have various options. In this case, we're going to go ahead and click on Fill from Estimate, um, and you'll notice that the estimate rates have been transferred into um, the respective cells. They've also been denoted by blue, which means they are an estimate price. The low columns will change be, uh, because the C4 concrete subcontractor is now the lowest subcontractor. I'll move on to the excluded items for C4 concrete. I'll just highlight both of them and go ahead and delete them out. In this case, our initial estimate rates 
are lower than those from the competing subcontractor. So we shall price these items based on the other subcontractor's rates as the other subcontractor has priced them at $14, where our estimate is currently sitting at $12. Um, so we'll use, decide to rather use the higher um, rates of the actual quoted rates from the other subcontractor. To do that, we just need to select the two cells, go ahead and click on that fill button again, and this time instead of saying fill from our estimate, we're going to go ahead and select fill from A1 concrete. While I have this little window open, if there were more than, um, if there were multiple subcontractors uh, with some prices in them, they would be listed below A1 concrete over here. In this case, there's only one other competitor subcontractor, and that is A1 Concrete. So I click on Full from A1 Concrete, and you'll notice that A1 Concrete's rates have been uh, placed into these respective cells. Um, however, they have been highlighted in orange. Orange means they have been um, selected from another subcontractor, um, just so that we can keep track of the status of these rates. So that was one scenario. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these two cells again and refer to another scenario with regards to the status of some rates. In this hypothetical example, it has been decided to plug these items with a rate midway between the initial estimate and the competing subcontractor's price. So the initial estimate price, uh, these items at 12, the Competitive subcontractors at 14, so we'll just plug in a rate of $13 for each of these items. You'll see I've typed the rates in, and automatically, because we can go ahead and um, manually price items um, by just typing them in, they automatically are green, which means that they are a quote price. However, in this case, I've just typed them in, and uh, they're not referencing any other rates at all, so I've just plugged them in. In that case, we've got the plug button where we can go and click on the plug button, and you'll notice that the state of, this, of these rates have gone ahead and changed to purple, which means that they are plugged rates. When I return back up to level one of the workbook, note that a color bar chart is shown um, below the total figure in cell T1 comprising of both green and purple, indicating the proportions of the total figure from quote and plug components. Similar bar charts are also shown wherever a mixed status exists for a figure. Now, on, on the screen over here, you'll, you'll see a little purple pixel over there, denoting that a portion of this price um, is made up using plugged rates, which might be a high-risk item. Preferably, we'd like to get um, that bar chart almost, you know, completely green. Um, therefore, it means that that full price is a solid quote price. As C4 Concrete uh, are the lowest price subcontractors, we shall select them as our preferred choice of subcontractor. To do that, we either need to click on C4 Concrete within the low name columns, or we can click on C4 Concrete within their respective um, columns, um, as long as we are selecting the C4 Concrete detail. So we can select either one of these cells and click on Make Preferred. Um, another option to, instead of clicking on Make the Pre Make Preferred button, we could also right-click on C4 Concrete, and you'll see that there is a Make Preferred um, button that we can select over there as well. Two different options. Once I've made C4 Concrete the preferred subcontractor, you'll notice that um, within their respective columns, um, the C4 Concrete and their total become uh, bold and underlined. And for the preferred columns, you'll see that um, they are, are transferred, all the detail for C4 Concrete has been transferred through to the preferred columns. Once we've selected uh, C4 Concrete as our preferred subcontractor, we can actually drill down to level two of the workbook, and you'll notice that um, the preferred columns have also been populated um, with C4 Concrete detail for each of the items. Return back up to level one of the workbook. 
For the pricing of the formwork trade, um, you'll see that obviously we've we've finished with our concrete trade. We'll move on to the formwork trade. We will assume that the first subcontractor has submitted a lump sum price with no rate breakdown as the previous example with concrete. To fill with a lump sum, we just need to go ahead and select the subcontractor. In this case, I'll just select Acme Formwork and we can go ahead and click on the fill button and Previously, we touched on fill from estimate and fill from a competitor subcontractor. We can go ahead now and click on fill to lump sum. The fill to lump sum window will appear, allowing an amount to either be added uh, to an existing current total um, or a final total amount to be entered. In this case, I'll just select uh, um, the final total field and type in a value of $55,000. You'll also notice that there's a status um, drop-down section where we can choose the status of this quote. Or was it either a quote or was it coming, the price is coming from my estimate or from another subcontractor or are we simply just plugging in the lump sum figure. In this case, it was an actual quote from Acme Formwork, so we can go ahead and click on OK. Once we've entered in the lump sum figure of 55,000, we can actually drill down to level two of the formwork um, trade. And you'll notice that each, that lump sum figure has been prorated across each of the items. That prorata is based on our estimate rates. I'll return back up to the level two of level one of the workbook. And we shall now use the filter lump sum function for the easy formwork subcontractor. However, before doing so, we can first tag a number of items that have been excluded from their quote. So we'll drill down to level two, and I'm going to go ahead and select the following cells, tag them as excluded. To do that, we can click on fill and select fill with excluded. So all the um, former class two items have been excluded from their quote. Now when I return back up to level one of the workbook, I can go ahead and select easy formwork and click on fill and fill to lump sum. Let's say that easy formwork priced the job with a lump sum figure of $44,120. I'll leave the status as quote and click on OK. When we drill down to level two of the of the formwork trade, you can note that the lump sum figure um, for easy formwork has been spread over all the previous blank items pro rata to the estimate pricing. However, the cells that we've flagged as excluded have remained um, tagged as excluded items. We obviously need to deal with these excluded items. For that, I'm going to go ahead and select the following cells and delete them out. You'll notice that I haven't deleted that one as later on in a future webinar we'll touch on how we can pick up um, excluded items by using an incomplete item check um, button. Uh, just in case you do make a mistake, in this case it's a hypothetical mistake where I've forgotten to select that cell and we can come back to it later to sort it out. So yeah, at this stage, I'll just go ahead and select those cells. I've deleted them out, and now I can go ahead and click on the Fill button. And in this example, we'll just select Fill from our estimate. You'll see that the rates have turned blue, which means these rates are carried through from our estimate. You'll also notice that Acme Formwork um, subcontractor is now becomes the lowest. Now that Acme Formwork is the lowest subcontractor, we can go ahead and select any cell representing Acme Formwork, whether it's the name or the total within the low name columns, or, or even within um, the Acme Formwork um, rate columns, as well as their total columns. Again, as long as it's any data that's re um, relevant to Acme Formwork, go ahead and select it and click on Make Preferred. You'll notice that the Acme Formwork column um, rates have gone ahead and turned to bold and underline, 
and all the relevant rates have been fed through to our preferred columns out on the left hand side. And if we return back up to level one of the workbook, you'll notice that Acme Formwork has uh, turned to bold and underline, and there is Acme Formwork detail within our preferred columns. Great, so now you'll notice that um, we have gone ahead and selected a preferred subcontractor for both our concrete work as well as our formwork. In our next webinar, um, part four of the five part series, we'll touch on how we're gonna go ahead and um, select our preferred subcontractors for reinforcement trade, where we're actually gonna split the package between the two different subcontractors. Thank you very much for watching our part three um, webinar on the subcontractor comparison. Um, if you'd like to contact either myself or any of my team members, please feel free to um, email us on support at exactl.com or give us a call on the following two numbers. If you'd like to view this recording of this webinar, please feel free to visit our website at www.exactl.com forward slash um, webinars. Thank you very much for logging on to our webinar today and hopefully you guys all have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.